My intention for today is to help you understand crystals on a deeper, more profound level, right? So let's just jump right into it. So on a physical level, um, deep down in the Earth's crust, right, there's a lot of pressure buildup and there are a lot of different types of minerals as well. So under intense pressures of the elements, basically, um, the minerals begin to crystallize. So every time, um, well, every type of mineral has a very specific vibration. And to better understand the concept of vibration, I highly recommend going back and watching the previous video that I that I made titled Basics, Energy, Vibration, and Frequency, right? So when different minerals are compounded together, um, this alters their frequency. So for example, the mineral silicon has its own specific vibration. So uh, so does oxygen, right? The mineral oxygen. And when these elements are combined, the frequency changes all together and it actually creates quartz crystal. So this is actually one of the awesome ways uh, that crystals can be beneficial because knowing, um, for example, that the crystal lupidolite contains lithium, we can actually use the crystal and utilize it to help treat things that we would normally take lithium medication for right because it contains the mineral um, known as lithium as well as medications that contain the mineral known as lithium and it's actually kind of a more uh, alternate and holistic way to add those same vibrations to your body but without getting um, some of the crazy side effects of medication right so the earth itself is comprised mostly of iron, silicate rock, and oxygen, but as far as scientists are concerned, silicon and carbon are the two main elements that constitute life, right? So carbon is the sixth element and is located directly below silicon on the periodic table, right? So carbon is associated with all organic chemistry and everything that we consider to be alive. Which brings me to another key point that's kind of important, that um, there's so much more to this universe uh, than meets the eye, right? So our modern day definition of what's alive is not exactly accurate. It's not exactly correct, right? It's slightly off. So when you think of a living thing, you think of something that exhibits movement, respiration, sensitivity, uh, growth, reproduction, excre excretion, you know, stuff like that. But we need to start kind of measuring what's alive by the state of consciousness, right? Um, what being alive actually is, is the ability to be aware, to think, to perceive, right? So crystals um, are conscious and aware, believe it or not, right? So a good example of uh, conscious beings that are very alive, that do not demonstrate any of those kind of typical uh, characteristics of something that we consider to be alive, um, is a virus, right? Viruses do not demonstrate those characteristics, but we know they're living, don't we? So uh, we could consider mineral energy the original physical manifestation of Mother Earth, right? Which is, in a sense, uh, a living being as well, but we won't get into that right now. So we have already discovered uh, forms of consciousness deep below the sea um, that are made of completely 100% silicon and their bodies don't contain any carbon whatsoever, which defies the laws of physics as we know it. Um, so it's kind of amazing that scientists are trying to like figure this out, uh, trying to expand and figure out how this is possible. And crystals are actually another example of a living consciousness that does not contain carbon, right? And so, um, maybe you're familiar with uh, an aspen rainforest, right? So in an aspen rainforest, the roots of a single tree can shoot into the ground and grow up into another tree. And you can actually not differentiate uh, between the single trees and the group of trees because uh, the root system, aka the consciousness, um, of the trees are all the same, right? So the aspen rainforest is basically known as one of the largest organisms that exists on the surface of the planet today, right? And this is the same situation with crystals, right? You cannot differentiate between the points on a crystal um, or the cluster that the crystal came from, that it was growing from, right? Because the entire crystal is one 
living organism. So life force energy flows uh, in and out, aka prana, chi, you know, life force energy, whatever you want to call it. It flows in and out of crystals and every living thing because we are all made of matter, right? And matter is made up of atomic particles that are just organized into different structures, right? Depending on the vibration. So just like color and sound, we actually have a very specific vibrational frequency ourself uh, that we emit, that we emit and put off. And this is considered our personal vibe or our aura. So you are going to be drawn to a crystal electromagnetically um, that your aura resonates with the most or needs the most, right? So let's not forget that crystals have different elements and different atomic particles, and this dictates their vibration. Imagine all the different possibilities of combinations out there, right? And so you have a very specific frequency. So if you are attracted or um, to or repulsed by a specific crystal, this means means something right so i would do some research uh, on the vibration of whatever crystal you're attracted to or repulsed by because this is going to tell you what your vibration is compatible with and what it's not right where are you at so um basically uh, surprisingly without crystals computers wouldn't even exist right so a man named Marcel Vogel, who is a scientist who holds over 200 patents, including for the floppy disk, brilliant man, he discovered that crystals can send, receive, interpret thoughts and emotions, right? Another point is let's flash back to Tokyo, Japan, right? In 2012, Hitachi, the engineering company, basically uh, announced its newest creation, its newest technology, and this was a storage ship that was made purely from only quartz crystal. Right, so they had a major breakthrough. They had major breakthroughs in etching and electronically encoding information into the crystal chip. And then it was translated through your device, helping you experience whatever they encoded into that crystal chip, right? And that is how our smart devices work. So pretty cool. Odds are you have a crystal in your smart device right now that you are watching from, right? So the first radio in the world was in fact a crystal quartz set. Right, so the, uh, the crystal was picking up and emitting the frequency. So, so this is especially important to know after we've grasped the, the fact basically that our thoughts and our emotions are vibration and frequency that we are projecting out into our field, right? So basically, this is why crystals can uh, affect or amplify the thoughts or feelings or emotions that you're projecting into your field. This is how they can affect us. So scientists will openly admit that quartz crystal can hold electromagnetic power and absorb energy in ways that they have yet to understand, right? They've even stated that at NASA, um, at NASA headquarters right now, there are multiple experiments going on with growing crystals and trying to unlock all the kind of cool secrets uh, of crystals in our universe. So why are crystals so important to human life? Like, why is this all relevant, right? So if you're asking any holistic health practitioner, um, it's not a secret that the uh, herbs and minerals on this planet benefit us in a number of ways. So for example, um, when you take an aspirin for a headache, it helps because one of the main components is willow bark, which helps the human pain system. So willow bark helps us from a vibrational standpoint because basically on a quantum level, the vibration of willow bark is not a vibrational match to the vibration of a headache. Modern quantum physics and the law of attraction states that only frequencies that share the same space, they, they have to be a match, right? They have to be a match if they want to share the same space. So what must happen is that uh, one of the vibrations will change uh, because they must be a match in order to share the same space. So the pure vibration is always going to be the one um, that is dominant because that is the vibration of well-being. It's the natural state of humans, well-being, right? So this means that if you're not at your best physically, you have the physical um, or energetic blockages that are preventing you from your natural born state of being as a human, right? So 
The willow bark is the more pure vibration because it is more natural and more holistic while the frequency of a headache is actually originating from dysfunction, from a vibration of dysfunction, not purity, not holisticness, <laughs> whatever you want to say, right? So a lot of ailments that you find in the human body are not cohesive and not at all matches to the vibrations of natural mineral energy. So for example, uh, you could use a stone like fluoride because cancer or arthritis has a rapid and non-cohesive pattern, right, uh, in its vibration. And so introducing this alternative vibration, you are able to help mitigate, discourage, or convert those lower frequencies of cancer or arthritis. So the vibration of fluoride is very cohesive, very grounding, and so that is why it is a very uh, good choice to help neutralize a disease that the pattern is off the charts, right? You want a steady vibration. If you have a crazy vibration like cancer or arthritis, you throw in a neutral vibration that's very grounding, very stable, very, you get what I'm saying, right? And it's gonna neutralize that vibration and it's going to form um, to the slow uh, vibration of fluoride, right? So if you are drawn to crystals, that is your intuition um, speaking to you and you will be drawn to a vibration that will help you the most align with your healthy, natural state of well-being, right? So if you take a look back in history records, we have been finding evidence of the ancients using crystal technology as far back as recorded, right? So from the Egyptians to the Hopi tribes to the Mayans to the Sumerians to the ancient Greeks, crystal knowledge is by no means a new thing, guys. So the Greeks actually use crystals so much that uh, a lot of the modern names we hear today are come from Greek origin, right? So amethyst is a pretty popular crystal right now, and it's traditionally known for its kind of sobriety purposes um, because the vibration naturally helps neutralize the vibration of alcohol, right? And it act, the word itself actually means not drunken. <laughs> Greek origins, right? So crystals also demonstrate the piezoelectric effect, which happens when the crystal is heated or distorted, and this allows um, for the transformation of mechanical energy. And this is how and why we have crystals in a ton of our modern electronics, like smartphones, smart TVs, radios, watches, barbecue lighters, surprisingly, you know, stuff like that, right? Um, so for example, in a watch, a little thing hits the crystal, helping it vibrate, 327,680 times per second and we can measure this in hertz and this creates energy in the crystal which powers the watch right and you can do your own research you can look this all up for yourself if you need but crystals are everywhere in our society you guys all right so that is all i have for you today on crystals i'll probably make some future videos about uh, the different kinds of crystals the different vibrations they have different ways to use crystals different ways i use crystals you know i could go on forever about crystals but i hope uh you know this helped in some kind of way and i hope you all can go out and grab some crystals throw it in your energy body and let it uh work it's kind of magic right so i hope you all have an amazing day uh go ahead and subscribe or like the video if it was helpful for you so i can get this information out to other people and kind of help my algorithm a little bit and i hope you all have an amazing day ask any questions below and i will definitely jump on them Mwah. namaste